On today's two on your side town hall throughway controversies from overcharging tolls to the plan for improved throughway plazas. We have questions for a lawmaker who's been pretty critical of the folks who run the highway system. Plus, a lot of you use Venmo to send and get money. So what should we make of claims about the fees? It's charging small businesses. We'll verify. And returning to work, we're going to look at how bosses and employees are dealing with the change. In many cases, trading in the sweatpants and Zoom meetings for in-person interactions. Well, we begin today here on the town hall with our Verify team. Once again, trying to get to the bottom of a viral claim. The latest one asking for some clarity on fees for apps that let you transfer money right from your phone. Yeah, we know that this is getting shared a lot out there. And so Brandon Lewis is helping explain what's up. Verify here with your fast fact. Venmo and Cash App users received an email explaining new fees for some transactions. That's leading to posts from frustrated small business owners like this one with more than 60,000 shares. So let's verify. Are Venmo and Cash App charging fees for businesses? Our sources are Venmo owner PayPal and Cash App. Cash App already takes a percentage of business transactions, while Venmo says it will start later this month when it will ask senders to mark if they're paying for goods or services. Venmo says this gives customers some protection in case something goes wrong. With personal accounts, once the money is sent, there's little recourse to get the money back. So it's true, Venmo and Cash App are charging businesses fees for using their apps. This doesn't apply to personal transactions, so keep splitting the check among friends. With your Fast Fact, I'm Brandon Lewis. And that is an important distinction. There's been some confusion online, people thinking there will be new fees for individuals to transfer money. That is not true just for businesses. Yeah, the only time an individual has to pay the fees is if you want it to be immediate, right? And you don't want to wait the couple of days in order for it to transfer to your bank account. So good to have some clarity on that. And you heard what they said. You can still split the check. Yes. Or just pick it up for a friend. <laughs> Why not? Well, to the throughway now, a big part of life, of course, for a lot of Western New Yorkers, and it's been in the headlines for a couple of reasons. Yeah, if we don't take this, this isn't going to work out. So let's try to get to this video if we can. Chief among the concerns is problems with the tolls for customers of Easy Pass. Now, we've reported on that a lot lately after viewers contacted us to say they're getting charged too much and having a hard time getting their bills corrected. There's also the news we brought you last week about the $450 million project to revamp service plazas along the thruway and add new restaurants like Starbucks, Shake Shack, and Chick-fil-A. That last one is prompting pushback from some Democratic lawmakers who say the company has donated to anti-LGBTQ causes in the past and shouldn't be included in the project involving a state entity. And some even signed this letter asking the thruway authority to reconsider. So joining us live right now to talk about all this is State Senator George Borrello, a Republican who represents the Southern Tier, and we appreciate your time to talk about this tonight. Good to be back with you. Thank you. Of course. Senator, let's start with those tolls. I know that you've heard from people in your district and outside your district about these overcharges. I'm wondering how you and your office are helping. Um, what's the latest in terms of kind of getting this sorted out? And, and what role does the state legislature have to really try to get to the bottom of this? Well, really, um, you know, the Thruway Authority and all authorities in general are, have a very non-transparent uh, way of operating, uh, and, and the, this is a clear example of that. We've been contacted by con constituents uh, that have had uh, overcharges, and we have tried to advocate on their behalf because in addition to clearly being overcharged because their plate was red as opposed to their Easy Pass tag, when they actually apply for a refund, they are being denied. Uh, so the... Tr Traversing the uh, you know this uh, throughway system has made it very difficult for people to get this resolved, and we're trying to help out the best we can. And we want to talk a little bit more about that because you've said before the throughway authority is sort of shrouded in this secrecy that it's difficult to get information or help. Should lawmakers and can lawmakers do anything about that? And do you believe that there is interest among your colleagues to try? Well, you know, when you look at something like the Thruway Authority, this is and the vendors that they use, um, you know, they are supposed to be following all, all the procedures that apply to every state entity. But there's really, uh, you know, no way to verify that. And the fact that they use Conduit, who has a history of problems with cashless tolling, that goes back to the Grand Island Bridge and the Mario Cuomo Bridge, tells you that uh, clearly there should have been some more open transparency in the choices 
they were being made. Uh, and now that this thing is statewide all across the throughway, and we're getting reports from across the state of similar issues, it tells me that uh, uh, they have not been held responsible for the uh, for the issues that, that have been created by a uh, an entity that we've had problems with in the past. Yeah, certainly something that we will stay on top of, as we know you and, and other lawmakers will as well. I want to turn right now to those upgrades to the service plazas. Just to be clear to everybody, this is a private project because the state made a deal with a company to essentially let it run these rest stops with the condition that it fund these improvements, which are very pricey. Um, but there is clearly a state interest here, right? State money involved in a roundabout way. And I'm wondering, do you agree with those lawmakers who wrote that letter saying that New York State shouldn't get involved with a company like Chick-fil-A because of those prior concerns that we've heard about for a long time? I think first and foremost, uh, they have to make good business decisions to the throughway. As you mentioned, this has been a very costly upgrade and the throughway service areas were devastated in the pandemic, quite frankly. I travel the throughway frequently and stopping at the rest areas, the quality and consistency of the service uh, has really lacked, uh, you know, sporadic hours, poor, you know, not, not very good choices. Um, they're having problems with employees, getting employees to work. So, you know, when you look at uh, the condition of the service areas and how important they are to generating revenue for the for the throughway authority, <clears throat> I think it's important to have good choices. And when you look at Chick-fil-A, just look at Chick-fil-A's in Western New York, they are constantly busy. They're very popular, wildly popular with the traveling public. Uh, I can tell you that uh, across the nation. Uh, even in New York City, Chick-fil-A's are very busy. So I think they have to make a good business decision. And in the end, consumers can make their own choices. If they don't believe that they should patronize Chick-fil-A because of whatever uh, political uh, alignment they might have, then they can choose not to go there. Uh, keep in mind that when you travel from service area to service area, the choices change. So if people choose not to go to a Chick-fil-A, the next service area, they'll likely have a different choice. So I think that uh, this has to be a decision made based on the economics of it and that ultimately uh, if this is what's going to give us the best chance of this throughway being successful and those service areas returning to the reliable services that they once provided, then, then choosing a vendor that's going to be very popular with the traveling public is a good business decision. You know, anyone who's been on a road trip with their family or kids or even their friends will know that that decision might be 15 miles down the road or, or more. And another concern that people have brought up is that Chick-fil-A isn't open on Sundays for religious reasons. You talk about that choice, so that would limit those food options on what is one of the busiest travel days of the week. So we're wondering about your thoughts on that, but also your overall impression of this major renovation project. Was it the best option for the state to put this out for bid and let a private company take on the cost in exchange for the proceeds? Well, keep in mind the throughway service areas have always been run by private entities, including uh, Delaware North right here in Western New York. Um, they are certainly, uh, you know, best fit to do those type of things. But, you know, I think this just speaks to is there a lack of transparency in the process? Um, you look at the, um, for example, the uh, the wind turbines that are located at some of the exits that uh, stopped functioning a long time ago were a huge waste of money, and there were there was no due diligence involved. There were no uh, local there was no local input. So, I have issues. authority authorities in general that operate without accountability to the state legislature um, and I still think that uh, despite all that they have to certainly make good business decisions and in this case um, despite of how they, they may have chosen this particular vendor they have to give them the best chance to succeed and, and not tie their hands for political reasons. Great to get your thoughts. State Senator George Borello represents the 57th district. We appreciate you coming on a little bit of um Technical glitches there with the video, but we heard you all the way through and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to be back. Thanks again. Now to some COVID updates today, because while the pandemic has faded significantly, it's certainly not gone. Cases are rising in 43 states right now, particularly in places with low vaccination rates. The CDC says over the past week, new infections are up 16%. Hospitalizations are up nearly 9%. There is some good news that deaths do continue to decline. Experts blame the trends on the Delta variant and say 99% of those who died from the virus last month were not vaccinated. And even a year into this, we are still learning a lot about this disease. Researchers in Belgium say that they've discovered the first known case of somebody being infected by two different variants of COVID at the same time. 
They say the 90-year-old woman who died of the disease earlier this year had both the alpha and beta variants, which they believe came from two different people. They are still looking at whether or not that made her disease more severe. And the lasting impacts of the pandemic are still being studied as well. Researchers at the University of Michigan looked at hospital data and found that hospitalizations for eating disorders spiked over the last year. They say there were more than twice as many of those patients in the hospital each month during the pandemic as there were on average in the three years beforehand. They think all the turmoil of the pandemic may have worsened or triggered symptoms in those who already had eating disorders or may have been at risk.